Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good evening. This is a conference meeting of the City Council of, C of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chamber, City Hall, 29 North Day Street, Orange, New Jersey, on January 7, 2020, at 7.04 p.m. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Present. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson, Jr. is going to be late. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Present. Councilwoman Wooten is absent. Council President Eason? Here. Also present is Joyce Lanier, the city clerk. Uh, Adrian Mapp, the finance director, who's also sitting in for the business administrator. Gracia R. Montillas, the city attorney. Kenneth Douglas, the fire director. Marty Mays, Planning and Public Works Director, Todd Warren, Police Director, Marlon G. Towns, Legislative Research Officer, Bassett Sanchez, Record Support Technician, and Tamara Robinson to the right, which will be the new employee in the clerk's office. Please stand for a moment of silence. Councilwoman Council Council Williams. I know there's a lot going on, but immediately before us is um, Difficult with our RAM and everything, so we can just concentrate on that with our military being deployed. Let's pray for our military and our first responders, wherever they are. Amen. Please be apprised anyone wishing to discuss agenda or general items shall sign one book. Each person signing the book will be allowed to speak for a maximum of five minutes. The requirements of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 9 et sec, the Sunshine Law, has been met. A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5th, 2019, and the record transcript on July 11th, 2019, posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and filed in the office of the City Clerk. Housekeeping. Happy New Year and welcome to 2020. We all made it, so we can say thank, thank God, thank God. We're here tonight to start off a brand new year. And let's just try to stay positive and do things that's for the best interest of our residents and make sure that we're doing the right thing and we can sleep at night. Sometimes we have to say no, sometimes we have to say yes. But also I just wanna remind you all that we're gonna be very, very respectful There'll be no yelling out, no talking. If you feel you must have a conversation, I'm asking that you step outside and have that conversation. But we're gonna move this meeting forward as expeditiously as possible. I'm gonna be home by eight o'clock. No, <laughs> I'm gonna make it, but anyway. Uh, so we're gonna move on. Thank you. For matters of discussion, we have the uh, Orange Police Department. Todd Warren, Director of Police. Uh, Happy New Year. I'm glad to see that we all made it um, through another safe year. I want to begin by just letting you know that we are going to give a presentation on our 2019 year, all of our successes, some of our challenges, and things of that nature. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview, and Captain Vidiella will come and go into operational details. I want to begin by thanking the administration and the council members, all of you, for your support in 2019. Thank you for providing us with all the resources needed to carry out our duties. And we really appreciate all that you've done. This has been a great year um, with us working together as a team. The OPD mission statement, um, our mission is to provide a professional community-oriented police service, maintain peace and order. Regulate vehicle, pedestrian traffic, suppress crime, protect lives and property, maintain dispatch communications and records functions. Um, in 2000, on uh, September 25th of 2019, 12 officers are sworn into service for the city of Orange Township. Uh, during their first year, all new officers participated in walking patrols around areas of concern. Uh, this is another initiative that contributed to the success of the Orange Police Department. Uh, to complement this initiative, we will be creating a drone division which will serve as a public safety program that assists in the operations of both, both the Orange Police Department and the Fire Department. Um, 
as you know, in 2017, we started an anonymous tip line. And in 2017, we received 73 calls. 2018, we received 1,095 calls. 2019, we received 1,825 calls. And just let me hit the rewind button because I thanked the administration earlier. I thanked the council members. Um, but I also have to thank the residents because our success is based upon our unified action according to a well thought out plan. And when we work together as a team, it's easier. We have to thank the residents because if you, you look at the numbers, they've increased. We had 1,825 um, anonymous tip line calls this year, and they helped solve a number of crimes. So we want to thank the residents as well because they are an important part of the team. Um, our community events include career days, National Night Out, Turkey Drive, in which we distributed 180 turkeys to the community, Holiday Toy Drive, which is the fourth year that we've been doing it. Um, we have the Orange Police Department versus Oakwood Avenue School basketball game. They cheated, but they beat us by nine points. <laughs> um, PAL activities and events, spring football, girls power up, self-esteem day party, uh, beautification projects with the Orange uh, Public Library, wrestling summer camp, junior public safety summer camp, PAL back to school giveaway and supplies, Orange PAL soccer tournament, the Halloween trunk or treat, and the wrestling team. And just uh, real quick, two of our major goals, or three for 2020, is to establish or implement our K-9 unit, establish a drone division, and hire more officers, which will increase our manpower and enable us to do a lot more. Um, with your permission, Council President, I want to call Captain Vitiello up to go into a operational detail into our, uh, our slideshow. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Captain Vinny Vitiello, Orange Police Department, Chief Law Enforcement Officer. May seem like a lot, but I'm going to fly through these because I, I thought you'd like see, to see some of the pictures that go along with the jobs that we actually do. And um, we're going to start off with some statistics that went on throughout the year. If you have any questions about your package, just uh, feel free to ask at any time. Police Director read our mission statement. We are indebted and in tune in helping the community. The only thing where it says commitment and commitment. Accountability and performance. What I want to add to that is sustainability. We've got all three. If we don't sustain any one of those three, then it's all out the window. Okay, this is the unified crime report. This tells us everything that happened throughout the year, crime product wise. Now, as you can tell, we're down 13% in total crime index from the year prior, and then from the year prior to that. So we're down almost 40%, a little more, in total crime over the last three years. It's all broken down for the year. Nonviolent, we're down 18%. Violent, we're down 7% for a total index of 14%. The patrol division of the Orange Police Department is the most visible group of Orange Police Department. Every police department that's are installed is its patrol division. These are the guys that are out there every day doing the daily grind, answering calls 24-7, holidays, Vacations, birthdays, they're out there. You call, we'll come. These are the stats for the patrol division for the year. So for 2019, we had a total of 619 arrests. 1,600 field interviews. Uh, 29,964 parking tickets. 38,000 calls, or 36,000 calls. 8,000 moving tickets and 1,300 city ordinances. Now this is our narcotics or scavengers. And these are the, our specialized units. They're the ones who usually start with the investigations to go up the food chain. Go from street level, the house level, maybe even a little higher. So for the year, we had 1,548 envelopes of heroin seeds, 68 grams of cocaine, 217 grams of marijuana, they also issued traffic summonses, city ordinances. They arrested 94 individuals on their own. They seized $12,000, recovered 14 weapons, and 19 vehicles were recovered. And they did, they did. Art, 
narcotics unit along with street crimes for a small city like that did 40 search warrants within our city for a year. In 2019, these are some of the firearms we recovered, 25 firearms. Some of these slides I couldn't give you because they're still kept for evidentiary purposes, so I'm just going to hand that out. In 2019, we deployed Narcan 33 times. <coughs> this is one of the individuals that we arrested in conjunction with the uh, FBI Violent Crime Task Force. He was uh, a gentleman that committed the, um, the murder of one of our individuals at a Speedway gas station. He was uh, apprehended with our guys with the Violent Crime Task Force. Another operation that we conducted with several agencies throughout Essex County. See, 29 defendants were federally charged, 12 kilograms of heroin seized, 2 kilograms of cocaine, 8 guns recovered, $450,000 in cash received, 12 vehicle seized, and approximately $500,000 in jewelry, designer shoes, and bags of liquor seized. So these are some of the things that our specialized units work hand in hand with other agencies throughout the county and, and the state. Two of the suspects that were arrested. Here you go, some of the uh, evidence seized that we discussed earlier. Another good job, Officer Andy Cappuccino, one of our mm -hmm. up and coming cops, always around the street at 258 Oakwood Avenue. We made an arrest where we got 84 Ziploc baggies, marijuana, Xanax, we covered a handgun, cocaine. This is a picture of that job. All the same job. Another job, 150 Main Street, by Officer Harris, covered a handgun. Another search warrant, Moore Street, covered drugs, guns. Hillier, South Jeff. Throughout the year, we do what you call initiatives. We target specific locations throughout the city, and we deploy a massive amount of manpower in order to clean it up, send a message, and keep it clear. And in May, as you can see, the stats, the arrests, in July, again, a lot of arrests, summonses, ordinances. So the guys are out there. We're actually, we're, we're identifying our hotspots throughout the year, our tour commanders, and they give me a plan, put the plan of action into effect, and, and we hit the corners. We started our traffic unit again, you know, mm -hmm. By us being able to get more manpower, there, there's a lot more things we can do within our city. There's a lot more different units that we can create, therefore making it easier on our patrolmen <coughs> and being able to serve the community a little better. Operation Helping Hands is a joint initiative between the Arts Police Department and the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, this operation was created in an effort to combat the opioid and addiction crisis by offering nonviolent drug users an opportunity to get drug counseling and even rehabilitation in lieu of prosecution. Our Juvenile Aid Bureau, in conjunction with the School Resource Officer Program, the Juvenile Aid Bureau handles all incidents and issues that involve persons who are under the age of 18 and not emancipated. This includes all criminal incidents with juvenile offenders or victims, and also many non criminal matters that require police intervention. Juvenile detectives are trained to investigate crimes with a particular emphasis on prosecution when indicated and rehabilitation when possible. Youthful offenders are treated with special safeguards and procedures that assess the seriousness of each offense and determine the precise course of action that best suits the offenders in the community. Well, come on, some kids make mistakes, and you don't want to hurt them for the rest of their life. So there are, there are other options that we can go or go instead of arrest. Some pictures of our, that's our Jared Adams, school resource officer. Now, Orange uh, Police Community Service Bureau, which is active four year long. These guys are probably some of the busiest officers in the city. They assist with the Orange PAL, which incorporates wrestling, soccer, football. We do turkey drives. We do, uh, <coughs> Disregard that. 
It's not food panties. It's food pantries. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was. That was you that would notice it. it. You. <laughs> First thing I noticed. I know. <laughs> That's a video. It's a video. It's really service. Really, you know, accommodating everyone. So we do uh, national night out, block parties, community events, and career day at not only the schools that we. We showed pictures of, but all schools. We're working hand in hand with the schools, even more so than ever under this administration, and it seems to be working out spectacularly. Here's some more pictures. Here's pictures of the holiday uh, trip, truck retreat. <laughs> now this is this is one of my favorite. I love this, and uh, we, you guys who joined the Toys for Tots that we do every Christmas, mm -hmm. we serviced over 700 families mm -hmm. this year giving out toys. Not only do we give out toys to the residents who come to our event, but we target the residents who need it, who can't get out there for that certain night. So we contact the schools, we contact the uh, churches and community leaders, and we hand out toys to those families who can't afford to get it themselves. It, it's such a wonderful feeling to help out these families. And as you can see, the person that will love it. Our training division, they're in charge of train, continuing training of our officers and also the new candidates that come on the recruits. Uh, we also have a relationship with uh, New Jersey Transit, and we established a fantastic partnership because they have a uh, fantastic facility right in our, in our city. Mm -hmm. Firearms training, uh, and it's just uh, another asset. This is our, our staffing. We're up to 123 sworn, off, 23 sworn officers from 112 last year, five recruits and 13 specials. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have even more in, in getting on. Because the trend has been with this administration and with this council and with the help of everybody here, if you see the stats, the trend has, crime has been going down. The city has been building up. And you know what? We relish the opportunity on the upcoming year to actually do even better than we did the following year. And like the director said, we're here for the community, we're here for, for anyone who needs it. And you know, I, I want to thank, I personally want to thank all the guys that work under the director and I, because they're motivated uh, and, and they're, they're just, you know, I want to get the job done. And, and they're just a, a great group of guys that are dedicated to our uh, course. And that concludes my presentation. Yes, Councilman Williams. I'm going to work backwards. Um, Guys, you should never turn to Work backwards. Um, you just mentioned New Jersey Transit and um, the great facility they had. And as we know, um, we just had a fatality um, with New Jersey Transit here in Orange. Um, the request I would have if we could ask them, if, and I'll just say, if we have had in Essex County 10 train fatalities, have we have they been able to determine were they people just being lazy trying to cross the tracks or were they mental illness? Um, at, we had our end of the year business meeting and our representative from transit had just made a clarion call to us is that why he is concerned with um, the upgrade of the Morris Essex line and us, um, you know, having uh, more efficient service, what he's most concerned was the amount of fatalities and then we just have this happen. So I would just be curious to know, is it more mental illness or just people being lazy? And and he said, well, and, and I've talked to Cap, and I know that his transits, um, it's, their duty to man, but I remember as a kid that it, I, I believe I, that there was an all out in the schools of kind of being more proactive of teaching us to stay away from the tracks and things like that. And if we can just get back to basics and things, you know, like that, because I want to say in the last three months, I've heard quite a few fatalities. I know there was one in South Orange not too long ago and then the one that just happened here. So, but go ahead. Detective Adams, he is mm -hmm. putting something together concerning oh. this because, okay. you know, when there is an action like that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to come back with a reaction. Right. So he's going to prepare something within the schools. 
but we also do have patrols mm -hmm. regularly at the train stations. Okay. So, but we will get back to you with that information of, of why this happened, whether it be mental health, suicide, or, or accidental. Yes, right. Just for the record, it's, it might be transit's responsibility, but we are part of that team, right. and they are part of ours, mm -hmm. and we will do what we can to go to schools and educate young people mm -hmm. um, about the dangers of crossing the tracks and things of that nature, and, and I guess kind of come up with some sort of campaign. Right. You know, they say, say no to drugs or um, say, be cool, stay in school. Mm -hmm. Maybe some sort of campaign mm -hmm. about crossing the train tracks. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can partner with them and their community uh, service mm -hmm. um, bureau and, and work something out. Okay. And whatever we do, we'll, we'll keep you posted, though. Maybe you can have some input as well. Okay. And then the we go on right here. Stay away from the train. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Video. <laughs> And then the um, the next one you mentioned, <laughs> Operation Help Helping Hand. Is that where's that um, vehicle from? It's for the posture resorts. Okay. We work hand in hand with them. We'll set up on what it does is we'll set up in a location. Okay. And target the the uh, the buyers. Okay. And we'll give them an option. Okay. Because we want to see them. You know what? Like like arresting them all the time, like like the director always says. Mm -hmm. you know, you just you're not helping the problem. Right. We want to give them an opportunity and a chance <clears throat> to clean themselves up and see that there's a different way. And that, mm -hmm. you know what? We do care about you. We just don't want to slap cuffs on you, dig in. We want to rehabilitate and get you better. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> Director Warren, this might be for you. Um, and it could be Cap, too. Um, we know for the school age, there's a uh, dynamic program for the high schoolers at the prosecutor's office. I want to say ninth to 12th grade. Or my, I don't know. Um, I know at one time they recruited heavily. Do we know we have students participating in that program? I'm not sure, but I will find out. I have a meeting with the Essex County Prosecutor mm -hmm. in reference to some other ideas. Okay. So that will be put on the agenda. And oh. if we don't have any students there, mm -hmm. we will get them involved. So I will add that to the agenda uh, for my meeting with him. And I don't know if you know, I was over at the STEM school too, and they were doing um, a project, a forensic project. They had to... Um, it, and it might be, you know, but they, so they got a crime scene and they had to work backwards to see how it happened. So it would probably be helpful. I, I wish they would have told us, like you're saying, Captain Baptist over there who's in charge of the uh, detective bureau okay. and be a part of it. Okay. And that's another way of, of, of bridging the gap and building the, strengthening the relationship with the schools. Okay. Thank you. Any other council members? Council President, if I may. Council Thank you. Johnson. I apologize for my lateness. Uh, out of out of town duties a day on my day job. So, Cam. Yes. How you doing, sir? That's good. Happy New Year. Oh, I'm sorry. You for know the record, I'm let me just announce that you are here. Thank you. Yes. I, I need for the record, be. Councilman Johnson Jr. arrived at 7:10 p.m. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Captain Vinny. Since I first met you, first encountered uh, doing business as a council person. You know, I, I was always the stat guy driving home to get feedback from the police department on how you feel as a leader and also what the police department is doing. I am pleased to see this report. The consistency of what we've been doing, and thanks for shouting out the administration and the legislative body working together, trying to turn things around in our town. Uh, I really appreciate it. The, the stats are clear. The numbers don't lie. If you're driving crime down and forcing the, the evils out of our town and you're keeping the stats, this is what we can show other people here in Orange that need to know that we're trying our best to keep them safe as possible. Uh, I just want to reflect on one of, one of the pages that I, I looked at, and that was the one on uh, the total arrest, the page on total arrest. Yes. What, what's, the, what's the significance of you listing a sick time, vacation, and excused off? Well, that was just showing you guys uh, another aspect of the police department, what we also do. Like we keep records and, and statistics on our own personnel because, you know, we want to see if there's any patterns, sick time, vacation okay. time. So, you know, the guys are doing a great job, and they get patted on the back, but they also have to maintain a certain level of professionalism. Police okay. Well, it, it, really interesting to to us since we control uh, the purse string. 
Yes. We've always w were wondering if, in fact, uh, your manpower went up, if your o t overtime would go down. Yes, it, overtime has been going down significantly. <coughs> you know, there's certain times of the year where the overtime is going to go up, mm -hmm. but this is why we review the time, because you may have a couple guys on, on holidays or certain times that are taking off, mm -hmm. which is going to cause overtime. Now, we look at that because we don't want to incur any overtime. Mm -hmm. if, 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 and if we could do anything to stop it, that, that's what we do. So we've been enforcing it now more. We have uh, weekly reports on who's out sick, how many days are out sick, if it caused overtime, mm -hmm. looking for patterns. Okay, so. it's really important to us budget conscious people. Yes. To, and I know there's some more things in the fire and the irons for the police department that will affect the manpower going forward if, if everything goes according to plan. Yeah. And that should have another effect in bringing down that number that we that we face. Yes, and you know what? The, the, the biggest, you know, it's a collaborative effect. It's just not the police department, like I said before. It's the administration, it's the council people. I, I've said this a couple times. Now. You know, I've been here 31 years now. And it seems like the cohesion between all of us is so much better than it ever has been. We're working together, we're working together for that common goal, the common cause for our citizens, for safety, and you, you can see it. It's 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 tangible on paper mm -hmm. with the stats. I I mean it's it, it's it's wonderful. It really is. It's really. And honestly, if it wasn't for the administration now, I probably would have left. I would have retired and left into the sunset. But I I, I like the administration, the council. I, I like everyone. They're on the same page, and, and we're all working towards a common goal. Okay, thank you, Cap. Uh, Council President, that's it for me. All right, Councilman Johnson. Jackson, thank you very much, Jackson, Council I'm President. <clears throat> Good to see you there, Chief Law Enforcement Officer. Thanks, sir. I've been trying to figure out a way to shorten that. But if, if, I was going to say that, but, I, you know, Cleo is your name. So <laughs> thank you very much for your service and sticking in there. Because okay. I, I see the same kind of positive cohesion that you're talking about, and I recognize that our, um, you're having more personnel has made a difference, but also some of the things that we've done, such as the uh, uh, cycle team, the and the things that are gonna that are coming, which include uh, uh, cameras and also um, the canine. Can you talk about the value of those things coming in? Oh, uh, that's right. The canine is an invaluable tool. Number one, it's, it's great for community image, community service. The kids love that. We go to the schools, but also it's a, it's, a, it's a major deterrent come out of a car and have that canine. And also our canine is going to be cross trade where we're going to use it for, like, if we get called to a, to a job where, say, people are selling drugs and you really can't find them, they're stashing it, that dog will help us to find those drugs yes. much more quickly and effectively. And it's just uh, it's just an overall positive thing for the police department to have. And I appreciate the, the coming here with these statistics at the end of the year. It, it's almost invisible what, what what's happening at 3,600 moving arrests. I mean, moving violations and you know those kind of numbers don't seem. It doesn't seem like Orange would have that volume of, of events, but it, it's really uh, encouraging. And and it should be a, a calming. It should be a warm, a warm uh, effect on on the citizens who feel safer. Uh, that it really is safer. It's just not just a feeling. And, and thanks to you, you, you and everyone on, on the OPD uh, for, for keeping us safer uh, and making us more comfortable in our homes. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Cat, I wish we had this kind of cooperation 20 years ago. So do I. <laughs> Remember we had vehicles, they had rust, and you can see the ground as you were driving. Tires are falling off, front front ends falling off vehicles, but that's where we were. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we're also in the midst of getting more vehicles. Yes. Up to 20 vehicles. Which yeah. is we have come a long amazing. way. Amazing. We've come a long way um, from years and years ago from the vehicles that we had to um, uh, drive around in. But, Cap, you know, uh, that's, that's a long time ago. But I'm glad to see that things are, you know, um, has made a move, made a shift. And to just keep up the good work. Absolutely. And uh, just. We will. We will. Our, our guys are very conscientious. Yes. We're going to. Uh, Council That's President, it? I have one follow up unless you want to go. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to all of you and for coming out and presenting the 
positive impact of the police force tonight. You all really, I always say you do a great job. I always praise and I see the cops working so hard and out there and our newest member of St. Matthew Church. <laughs> Very professional, comes in and uh, so he's gonna join one Sunday, so don't be surprised, but anyway. <laughs> he's learning something new about religion. And we love him. And all the officers that come and support, they're very good, very professional. So you you, you guys are doing a great job. And just so the guys know the cars are coming, they, I understand I followed up today. Should be here by the end of, in spurts, I guess he said. So you should have somebody, they, they're all being retrofitted right now. So we'll see the guys really profiling. Um, I think people are a little confused about the color because you can't see it's a police car till you get right on it. But that well, you'll was. You'll be able to see it because yeah. the reflective tape on there is tremendous. Yeah, so, but the bright lights are great. Yeah, They're great. Oh. So. You know what? We're, they're really outfitting them to, to the nines. Yeah, so I pray for you guys every day. So keep up the good work. Keep working together and building a supportive, cohesive police department where you support each other. Appreciate it. Thank you. Council President. Council President, I just want to say thank you guys. We sincerely appreciate everything that you do. It's not about just us, but it's about all of us working together. We cannot do it without you. You're not going to go on the street and patrol. But if we work together, and this year has been a tremendous year, although we had what, uh, uh, two homic one homicide, but that's still too many. But we work together. I think that we can make a, a real change in this city. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I thank you. Leadership is not easy, but working together as a group, it, it, it helps. So thank you to all of you. And if you need our support on anything, just reach out. Yes. Council President. Yes, Council follow Williams. Director, um, the skate park, the graffiti, um, are the cameras working in the skate park? Should be. Yes. Yes, yes they are. So if the cameras... All right. If, are we, do we have, and I guess this is a, um, a combination of Director Mays as well. And, and Director Mays, and I don't, there were police at the meeting, that the local skaters are really vested in taking care of that park. So they, I know the couple that I spoke to, they were um, very concerned and they would like to help. So I don't know if we can get together, have a meeting, provide them with supplies so we can clean it up and then hopefully that we can make sure that this doesn't happen again. Yeah, and we'll make sure that we do 1073s through the park. Okay. Park and walk through the skateboard park and make okay. sure that everything is in order. Okay. Yeah, we'll, I'll talk to uh, Director Mays and we'll work something out and keep you posted. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mapp? Yes. Are we doing the zoning on this tonight or are we postponing it? It's being postponed to January 21st. Okay. Okay. Very good. good. All right. Move the agenda. So um, there are several walk-ons outside for any of um, the constituents who would like to pick up one or two. Um, before we start talking about the resolutions and ordinance on tonight's agenda, I just want to say for the record, 418, 15, 16, 17, and 14 will all be returned to the administration, and 400 will remain on the table. And the veto. Are there any resolutions or ordinances that? If we ask to repeat that. Yes, yes. Do I'll turn you up something, sir? I'm just asking Justice to repeat. Okay. Uh, resolution 414, 415, 416, 417, 418 are all being return to administration. And for, you understood And then 400 is um, going to remain on the table. Mm -hmm. I talk, I talk. You. You're welcome. I talk. <clears throat> are there any resolutions that you wish to discuss tonight? Council members? Yes. <clears throat> Okay. We're gonna do a motion to close. Move. Moved by Councilwoman Williams. Second by Second. Councilman Coley. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned at 7.38 p.m. And we're going to move directly into our regular meeting. This is a regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chambers, City Hall, 29 North Day Street, Orange, New Jersey, on Tuesday, January 7, 2020, following the conference meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Present. Wow. <laughs> it's a new year. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Here. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Present. Oh. Councilwoman Wooten is absent. Council President Eason? Here. Also present is Joyce Lanier, the city clerk. Um, Adrian Matt sitting in for the BA and also the finance director. Gracia R. Montellis, the city attorney. Kenneth Douglas, the fire director. Marty Mays, planning and public works director. Marlon G. Towns, legislative research officer. Lisette Sanchez, record support technician. Tamara Robinson, clerk's office. The requirements of NJSA 10 colon 4 9 at SEC, the Sunshine Law, has been met. A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5, 2019, and the record transcript on July 11, 2019. Posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and filed in the office of the city clerk. There are no minutes to be approved. Reports. Department monthly revenue collection for 2019. Department of Community Affairs, November 2019, collected $7,648. The city clerk's office for the month of December collected $1,535.23. Orange Historic Preservation Commission for the month of December collected $70. There are no constable reports. Oprah reports. For the month of December, we received 123 requests. Out of the 123, 81 was complete and 42 are pending. Council President. Please file the reports. Council President. Yes, Council Owen. The Finance Committee. Council. Finance Committee. Yeah, we, I'm going to do that. Are there any council members that have any reports that they'd like to give on any of the committees that they're on? The council President, if I may uh, uh, yes, weigh in. The, the, on the library, I haven't heard anything back. I don't know if they touched base at all with the uh, clerk's office about uh, doing matters of discussion. But anyway, they have a meeting on the 9th, and I plan on being there. And I would invite as many people from the city of Orange to attend the library meeting uh, the 9th of this Thursday, I believe, mm -hmm. at 6.30. At 6.30? Yes. Council on Weeds, you want to report on the uh, Finance Committee? The Finance Committee met tonight at 5.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers in attendance was the folk was myself, Council President, Mr. Matt, uh, Ms. Perkins, and I don't, and Mr. Tom, I don't know Tom's last name, I'm sorry, <laughs> right now. Moran. Tom Moran. And yeah. um, items were discussed, but I just wanted, uh, in particular, um, Director Mays, um, had an explanation regarding, um, blah, 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 blah. If Mr. Mays, if you can come up, please. Council President, on um, the um, Court of Order, being that we didn't do them in the conference meeting, can we wait till they come up for voting and then he can explain? That's why I wanted to just nip no, it No, we right do that during the, during the voting on them so people know what he's to, which ones we're talking about. We just pull him and have him discuss them. I was trying to avoid that count. That's why I was just wanting him to give a summary so we can not pull it from the consent agenda. Which one? It's the ones about the sidewalks. Just the general oh, product. You. you could just yeah. Marty Mays director. Oh, four and five. I'm sorry. Marty Mays director of planning and development, and DPW. Yeah, with these sidewalks, um, these are people that ju had just recently redone their sidewalks and um, one of the things we want to do better when we start back up in the spring 
instead of notifying people as we go street to street, we're going to notify everybody so that they know. Because what's happening is we only had three incidences of this. These are the two that are on last on tonight, and we had one on the last meeting. So the people either got a ticket or a notice to do their sidewalks. In some cases, their neighbors didn't do it, but they did, and we came along and did their neighbors, and we're asking now for these two people that they be made whole. Thank you. Thank you, Council mm -hmm. President. Finish Councilman Williams. I'm sorry. Are you finished? Yes. Right. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Williams. I'm sorry. Just wanted to uh, make sure the record was properly reflected. I didn't hear. I know I'm Assistant sorry. City Attorney. I'm sorry. You're right. You're, I do apologize. Vaughn and Freddie were both in attendance. Yes. Thank you. Um, just real quickly, and this is Citizens Budget Advisory Committee. I'm asking the council members to please submit submit the names of the people that you are appointing as soon as possible uh, to um, our city clerk so that we can have them on the next agenda. And we'll be ready when the budget is ready. Council President, I thought we was going to uh, do the same. Uh, we still have to reappoint them each year. Okay. All right. All right. And maybe you'll get some new ones, some new people that want to get involved. I think we, the, the purpose of the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee was to give everybody in the city an opportunity to be on that committee if they felt the need. So when you do it, the same ones every year, you eliminate the people new that wants to come in and get involved. So I'm just saying, think about that, and let's, we're not rolling them over. Everybody has to be reappointed, okay? Hey, Council President? Yes, Council so members, That's the committee where we select two each? Yes, two each, two people each. So get them to the city clerk's office as soon as possible so we can have them on the next agenda. Move the agenda. There are no communications and petitions received. Citizen comments? Do you have the book? Pursuant to the section 4-10 of the code of the city of Orange Township, each person addressing the council shall step up to the microphone, shall give his or her name and address in an audible tone for the record, and unless further time is granted by the presiding officer, shall limit his or her address to five minutes. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and terminate any further comments. Mr. Jeffrey Fell. Um, good evening and happy new year to everyone. Um, my name is Jeffrey Feld, a local businessman and attorney in Morgan G, whose local business address is 268 Main Street, Orange, New Jersey. I, too, want to thank our first responders for all the great work they've done but, um, and the national trend in this area of the decrease in crime. As my custom, I delivered various heads-up memos to the council and legislative researcher, city attorney, and the BA. One was December 31st, 2019, January 2nd of this year, January 6th, and I also delivered to you this morning a copy of a letter I sent to the um, Essex County uh, freeholders. It's been interesting since our last meeting um, with the Trenton mayor when he swore in new citizens, our Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, talking about the importance of civics, um, you know, about enhanced transparency, accountability, adherence to the rule of law, the sin of silence and speaking truth to power. Um, the reason I say that, um, you saw the Oprah list, the number of Oprah um, outstanding um, requests, um, the un lack of um, adopted minutes. One thing I would suggest, and this is sort of a neutral comment, that on the public website there be a link to the YouTube videos of these meetings. So when people want to see what happens, they don't have to go search the internet that they could just hit a link on either the council or the city's um, um, website so they understand what can we watch. I want to point out that even though you withdrew and sent back to the administration a retention resolution, in the last two or three weeks, uh, five elected officials were arrested. There, there was been reported of a uh, cooperating witness who happened to be a tax attorney. 
that tax attorney was listed as to be retained as tax, uh, one of the tax attorneys. And one of the comments I had was that if, if all the attorneys were listed in the caption, the public would have seen that. And I think the public needs to know that one of the people we were considering, or one of the law firms we were considering to hire, are inv involved in the allegations of political corruption. I say that also, and this I would ask, we need to have a link to this document. This is the official statement dated December 12th, 2019. The public needs to read it, because there are certain issues in here, especially about what got refunded, about one of the bond ordinances that was adopted in 08, I think it's 0810. That was when we had the cost overruns. The question is, if we had $1.5 million of, un of authorized but not used bond proceeds, why weren't those bond proceeds at that time used to pay off the overruns in that project? That's one of the things that has to be looked at. Also, when you look at this, when I was a young attorney, I was a bond attorney, I would have been fired for what's on page two. Councilman Coley, you are the, do you know you're still the president of the city council? That's what we're telling the public. The question is, who read this document? You have to go through it. Um, also, what happened, at the end of the last month, the administration, the uh, Murphy administration, announced the award of 9% competitive um, long-term low-income housing tax credit. The Walter G. Phase, three pro four, phase 4 project was awarded. Today at 4 o'clock, I received a copy of the pilot that they're relying on. This is going to become an issue. This is the, the pilot that they're relying on was adopted in April 2017 over the objection of our BA. The amount that they agreed to pay is only 5%. It was rejected by the analysis. We we're going to have to look at it. In addition, if I recall correctly, in 2017, just before um, our attorney Mateos was involved as a city attorney, there were conditions imposed on the validity of this pilot agreement. I do not know whether those conditions have ever been met. And I don't know how the state or how this application got from the state if those conditions were ever made. That's what we owe But I think we need to talk about, when I talk about the OS, the no closings. Because at the last meeting, you declared a fiscal emergency. But since that, the last time, certain things have had. We had an accelerated tax sale. Did it close? How much money did we generate? Do we have a note sale? How much money did we generate? What money's got paid? When you read the OS, it talked about in early December that there were accelerate, there were anticipated notes for like three weeks. Were those three weeks notes paid off on December 23rd? I don't know. I made open requests. I still don't have it. But we need to know. Also, I found out there was an email I received that I gave to you. On December 31st at 6.37 p.m., the BA advised me that- Mr. Phil, I'm sorry, your time is up. And I have one minute to finish what- No, I your time is up, I'm sorry. You're only sorry for me, thank you. Uh-huh. Is there a motion to close citizen comments? Move. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilman Coley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? For the record, Councilwoman Adrian Wooten arrived at 7.49 p.m. Council comments? Councilwoman Williams, you ready? Yes. A um, couple of questions first. Um, Mr. Fell just showed, and I guess to Mr. Mapp, I believe a bond document, Mr. Mapp? Yes. Um, how can we get a copy of that? There's a copy, I believe, in the clerk's office. Are, are there end are enough individual copies that? No. Okay. So we would have to make a physical copy of it? We receive, I believe, if it's the same document. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's looking at, but I believe it's an official statement, and there were five copies that we received as a result of a recent note sale. Okay. And a copy was delivered to the clerk's office, one to the business administrator. Mm -hmm. um, we received a total of five copies. I have one, the CFO, and one of my staff members. Okay. So can you bring one in so we can review it while we're here? It's here. I'm oh, you're getting it right now? Yeah. And, um, and then my next um, through you, um, Council President, through you to Mr. Mapp or to Mr. Montellis. 
Um, Mr. Feld also brought up about the tax credits that were awarded to Walter G. And um, I know I'm quite concerned because um, that pilot was conditional upon, um, uh, I believe, a, uh, an opinion being received to this body. And to date, we have not received the opinion. So can do have we, as a city, done anything to notify um, the powers to be in Trenton, D.C., wherever, that, in fact, that the pilot that they're relying on is not sufficient because they did not comply with our request? You want to... Mr. Turner, can I tell us you want to respond to that? I can. <clears throat> and my only response at this time is I'll have to look into it. I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to speak on it now. I can get the council. I can get the I can get the body an answer by week's end. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Council, will you finish? Yes. Okay. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, I'm finished in terms of that. Um, again, I just want to say Happy New Year. Um, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> we at finance committee wanted to uh, one of my statements to everybody throughout the new year was happy new year uh, happy new decade and since it's 2020 but I'm going to reserve my happy new decade because um, I had two finance people um, <clears throat> submit uh, discussions that the new decade doesn't start until next year so I'm going to reserve that to the next meeting but um, I do want to remind everybody that we're here in 2020 and the census is ready to roll. There are a lot of programs that will be coming out and um, it's, a, it's a document that helps us get resources for 10 years. It's very important from everything to our streets, our health care, our schools. So everything that we need to do, um, I just want to make sure that we're engaged in the census as uh, we begin to move forward. I know, I believe um, there's gonna be a program that rolls out in the schools. There's gonna be a faith-based rollout. So um, I just be prepared. I don't, um, and they're hiring. Our, um, our area calls for uh, positions at $21 an hour. You can pick your own schedule. So for those who are looking for part-time work, it's probably a great opportunity um, to do some part-time work because you get to do your own schedule. So get involved and get engaged. Um, it's also election time. The election is um, preparing for council members at large here in the city of Orange as well as the mayor. And then rolling right into June, um, it's into, um, our uh, county committee and the pro uh, for us county committee. Okay. So, Ms. Lanier, can you just let you know for the record so it'll be reflected for those who are interested in participating as candidates? What do they need to do? They need to come into the clerk's office and pick up the petition packets, and mm -hmm. the petition packets has all the information that they need within the packet. Okay. Is there a deadline? Hours? The deadline to submit petitions are, is um, March 9th okay. for. The, count, the municipal council election, and March 30th for county committee. Okay. Hours? Between 8.30 and 4.30. Okay. Right. Thank you. And then um, the, the petitions for county committee will be ready on Friday. This? Okay. This Friday. This Friday. Okay. Thank you. And then finally, um, last night, the Orange Board of Education had their reorganization. So we are um, swore in... Um, three more persons from an elected. Um, so we, I think we, one more election and we'll have a full elected school board. Um, so congratulations to the three new members. And so because I can't remember everybody's name, I'm not going to call it anybody's name, but congratulations. Um, they, got, they went right to work last night and wishing them tremendous success. And in reorganization, I understand that the president now is um, Tyrone Tarvin. I'm not sure who the vice president is. Darling. Um, Ms. Daughtry, is the, Ms. Daugherty. Okay, is the uh, vice president, so wishing them success in the new leadership. Thank you, Council President. Councilman Coley. Oh, um, I don't have a whole lot. Um, what I do have um, is, I can't speak for everyone, but I can, um, I can definitely speak for me and. Uh, a few people that I do know um, who 
is suffering um, from high car insurance rates here in Orange. Um, if you go a town or two west from here, your rates is almost dropped in half. Here in Orange, we are being robbed purposely by the insurance company. And I don't know what we can do as a governing body um, to pass resolutions um, to our state and federal um, officials that something has to be done regarding the car insurance robbery that's going on here um, in Orange, East Orange, Irvington, and North. It's, it's, and that also includes um, property insurance. We are just paying over and above what other um, communities, uh, communities are, are paying. And Council President, um, I would like um, for this governing body to pass some kind of resolution to our state representatives and our federal representatives that something has to be done, looked into the robbery that's going on with our insurance companies um, here in the black community. Council McCullough, I think a better solution for me personally, we all need to write letters to our senators, our congressmen, the federal, the insurance companies. Yeah. Because if you get a massive letter writing from all the residents, it'll take, it'll get more. That is true, Council President, but I think that because one just coming from. resolution is just one thing that they're going to see. No, and unless I, I, it's legislating something, it really not going to help. Unless you're legislating something. Well, we don't know we can Council really President until we just try. Yeah, but I, I think, well, why don't we start a letter writing campaign? And it should start right with the governing body, I think. Um, yes. And then just there can be something that send them up. people can just duplicate. And then we can invite our legislators in Congress, Assembly, Senators to come to here one night and explain how they can help us accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Right. Because uh, car insurance is just crazy. Property insurance, crazy. And... It's just driving, you know, um, your, your, your everyday um, people out of Orange. And, and this is why we have, I think, this is one of the problems we'll be starting to have. Um, uh, we already starting to have uh, more um, uh, renters, you know, than homeowners because folks just can't take it. But I think all of us, this county is f facing the same issue. Not as, as hard as we are being pressed here in our black communities, Council President. I know, I know, but I mean, Essex County, if you look at car insurance as a whole, well, I'm not going to really go into it, but you got to look at the facts behind why Orange and all these areas are so high. That's why I said right. and we this need to why collectively I, I, do a letter writing I, I, campaign. I'm just asking Council yeah. President yeah, if it's okay if I can get our legislative research officer to draft something, you know, um, from the governing body, and we can use that as a starting point with your blessing. Or he can draft the letter, and we can all get a copy and we sign it and send it off. Thank you, Council okay. President. All right. And um, also, um, Mr. Mayor, that's um, uh, that store on Hickory Street is, is now closed. This I received multiple calls over the last few days about um, uh, garbage. And um, and they're starting to have a lot of you know rats running around the area. If we can get the that area cleaned out and better, I would truly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council President. You're welcome, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Council President. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy 2020. Um, one, just a quick tip. I, I read something that uh, uh, you should be advised to write the whole date. 2020 out when you write your date on the paper because there's a possibility of fraudulent acts being taken against your signature or anything. Uh, they could add 19 or 21 to um, obscure the reality of the date that you signed. So when you're writing out the date this year, uh, write those two extra digits. Um, and, and think in listening what uh, Councilman Coley was talking about insurance, I think those uh, encouraging and positive statistics received from the police department uh, could certainly be part of our argument against um, these high insurance rates in that um, so many crimes have gone down, especially uh, autos, uh, auto stealth, uh, auto stealing and those kind of car, car thefts. Um, 
in, in looking at 2020, I, I hope everybody is feeling positive despite what may be happening in the National uh, uh, Congress and uh, Orange is on its way up uh, to a place we may not have, we, we may not have reached before. Um, I think it's a combination of uh, collaboration between the different branches of government and also increased involvement from citizens. Uh, as I see, there is a, 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 it seems a steady number of citizens coming to the meetings and paying more attention, uh, thankfully. As we move on, uh, please understand that any issue that comes up can be resolved and lean on your elected officials to help you with that. Continue to give us an opportunity to serve you as we have taken an oath to do and uh, remain positive. Uh, Orange is a great place to live, we'll remain that way. And um, as we all work together, the three, three legs of the stool, uh, the administrative, the legislative, and the citizens, uh, Orange will be fine. Thank you, Council President. Councilman Johnson. Hey, Council President, thank you. Uh, um, this, I'm gonna chime in, but my, my colleagues are speaking in this insurance factor, but and not only letter campaign and so forth, but we as a legislative body and administration should start uh, looking at the underwriting factors that the insurance companies are using in Essex County and our town mm -hmm. so we can address those things with hard facts and statistics mm -hmm. from our police and fire department, not just randomly uh, writing letters that we, uh, we have to put some, some meat and muscle to their correspondence. We have to understand what tools they actually use in for underwriting to drive those numbers up. And then we can we have to counter that with our town is going in the opposite direction with with police statistics and fire statistics. Uh, I just wanted to shout out to Director Mays. You don't have to get up, sir, but uh, we had the holiday. Uh, you, you owe me a report on I Ivy Court. Uh, I expect to, to hear something from you before the week's out, if you don't mind. You know what we're talking about, right? Okay, Ivy Court is, is very important that we follow through uh, for what those constituents need, uh, need us to do since we passed the legislation. Council President, that's it for me. Right. Thank you. Councilwoman Wooten. Council President, I have, I'll be very brief. I have a couple of questions. Cool. Yeah. Um, regarding the, the accelerated tax sale, I received telephone calls, and this may be for um, Director Mapp, where people um, they say they were called by the tax department to come in and pay their taxes. They came in and paid, and then they paid again. They paid twice. So my question to you is, and I see it's happened because we, we quite often do refunds, like do we not have the systems in place so whenever I come and pay my taxes, other, the tax office will know that they've been paid by my mortgage company or maybe my husband came in and paid so we don't get double taxes paid. And then citizens, uh, you have to explain to them that we cannot just give you a, a refund. It has to come to the council and we have to vote for the refund to come. So could you explain that a little bit? Mr. Mapp? Each situation would have to be looked at individually because there could be any number of reasons why, but when one pays one's taxes with one's mortgage, there is a file that is sent by that mortgage company with the payments for those property owners whose taxes are being paid as a part of their mortgage. It is, what sometimes happens is that when a home changes hands, you could have a duplicate payment mm -hmm. and that would necessitate a refund. But it is highly unlikely that our system would require a property owner to pay twice. Mm -hmm. And so I can't sit here and say to you, it's because of reasons A, B, or C. Right. We would have to know the specific property so that we could look at that situation and determine what might have caused something like that to happen. So I'm asking, so once I make, say my taxes are $5, and once I pay $5, and suppose my mortgage, or once, maybe my mortgage company pays $5 to the, 
to the city, and then I come in and pay $5. Like, do we have a system that will talk to each other to let you know immediately that there's a double payment? Well, the system knows we have an accurate record of what has been paid against every property. Mm -hmm. It is highly unlikely, and it doesn't happen often, where the taxes are paid by the individual property owner as well as by the mortgage company. As I indicated, sometimes in situations when there's a change of ownership, uh -huh. that could happen where the mortgage company paid and a new owner paid, and so we have double taxes paid on that property. Okay. And in that case, there's a refund okay. that is given. Okay. But I would need information concerning specific property addresses where that might have happened okay. so that we could investigate okay. and get the right answer back to you. So I can advise them to call you? Just <laughs> have them call me and we will work it out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, can I ask a question about the tax sale? Do you mind? Go ahead. Do you mind? No. no. On that tax sale too, Mr. Matt, um, we had conversations and that accelerated tax sale, anything that was due, I guess at 101 and above, was pulled on that tax sale. It wasn't necessarily a quarter, so it could have been things in this current quarter that were due. Is there anything that this legislation, uh, this legislative body can do to kind of put guidelines that um, is either by quarter, a higher amount, because it just pulled everything in and on that accelerated tax sale with current bills? The city has an obligation to collect all of the taxes that are owed, whether it's a dollar, a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the tax assessor set the, set the minimum collector. at $100. The tax collector. The, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The tax um, collector set the minimum at $100. And so whoever owed the city mm -hmm. $100 or more became a part of that accelerated tax sale. And I got that, but my yeah. question is, some of those people were current taxes, they weren't delinquent. We have an obligation to collect <laughs> every dollar that is owed, whether it's current or whether it's delinquent. There's an obligation on the part of every property owner to pay ad valorem taxes. So somebody on that accelerated tax list who had current taxes due of $101, and somebody came in and purchased the lien, now they have to pay their current taxes <coughs> plus that even though they were current and not delinquent. If the taxes weren't paid, <laughs> they were due and owing to the city of Orange, and okay, the city so of Orange has a right to collect those taxes. So my question is, is there anything through legislation that we can do to make sure that we are capturing delinquent persons and not persons that are current? When it comes to legislation, I'm going to defer to the law department. Right, because I was going to say, Councilman, we will let um, our city attorney, because I was told that the guidelines for that tax sale was set up by the state, that it went through the Financial Review Board. So we're going to ask our city attorney to come back to us next meeting mm -hmm. with the correct policy and how that was done, that the city really didn't have any uh, input as to how that was set up. They put it together, they sent it to the, what, the financial review board. This is what I was told. And that's how it, it was set by the state. So we're gonna have our city attorney and Mr. Mapp work with Mr. Hartwick and come up with an answer for our next meeting. Okay. All right? So thank um, you. You're welcome. Yes, Councilwoman. Okay, okay. another thing. I, you know I've always asked about an active shooter training class or course for the city of Orange, especially um, for the buildings, the city buildings, like the police department, library, those buildings. So I met with Director Warren over the holidays, and he is totally interested in it. So I want to thank him, and I think he may be reaching out to the state um, police so they can come in and do an active training, because I think it's important for the things that's going on in today's society for if something happens in this building, um, we want to get out, but for the people who are here, I think it needs to be some sort of like a fire drill, like you know how many people are in here. You know if people are in the law department, those people know exactly where to go, where they can meet and be counted. So um, I'm just like hoping and praying that we get that up and get it done soon in the city. Well, and for I some thank years, you. we've been asking for a fire drill, 
So I think Mr. Mays might want to coordinate that with the Director Douglas. But one of the issues has got to be, because you know if we do a fire drill, you can't use the elevator. Right. So everybody's going to have to go out and outside and go out the fire escape. So all of those things need to be safe. Mm -hmm. But we do need to have one. My church just did one last Sunday. Just to err on the side of caution to make sure everybody knows and how they're going to get out. Doesn't have to be a fire. It could be anything uh -huh. that you need to evacuate and you can't use the elevator. So we're going to ask Mr. Mays to set a time and date for night. So one night when you guys get here, we might just have a fire drill <laughs> so that everybody will know how to get out of this building in case there's an emergency. I'm not leaving. <laughs> you got to. Okay, you finished. And the last thing I want to say is just happy holidays to um, everybody. Something that I say, one of my most favorite places to visit in the, in the entire world is Israel. So I say that because whenever you go there, it's no matter what your religious beliefs are, you know that something miraculous and wonderful happened there. And I want to um, say in the city of Orange Township during the holidays, the winter holidays, um, it was prevalent that whatever you, whatever your, your thoughts were, wherever your heart was, um, we dealt with it in the city of Orange. And we, we did the Christmas, we did Hanukkah, we did the Kanara um, last night, we did the Three Kings. So it's, I'm just thankful that I live in a place where um, people, you, you feel very inclusive. And that's all I want to say. Thank you, Council President. I don't really have anything. I just want to say Happy New Year again to everybody. And let's just all make an effort to work together this year and respect each other's opinions and work it out together. And let's move this city forward. Thank you. Move the agenda. Oh, one other thing I want to say to the residents, and I'm going to draft the letter this week. Our city is moving. A lot of streets are blocked off. A lot of streets have been changed because they have to replace the sewage pipes and we get new piping. So just be patient, but make sure you read the signs as you go along because a lot of things have changed so no one gets a ticket. So pay special attention to the streets. The men are working very hard. Sometimes you might have to go two or three blocks, but that's all over. I had to do that, that in... Um, Plus, uh, who was at Livingston the other night, and I went around, but their streets don't run consecutive like they do down here, so you might go up a street and end up in Hanover somewhere before you can find your way back to Route 10. So just be mindful of what's happening in Orange. Be patient. Don't give the cops a hard time, but please pay attention and read the signs so that we all can be safe. Move the agenda. Ordinance on second reading public hearing. 58-2019 W.O. An ordinance adopting an amendment to the Central Orange Redevelopment Plan. Any citizens wish to speak? I'm Jeffrey Phil. I gave you my address before. Um, a few comments I want to put on the record. Um, this transaction was supposed to close by, when I talk about the acquisition of the default loans by um, December 20th, it did not occur. In addition, I made various OPA requests and I sent to the council as, as an attachment my OPA request from December 16th requesting various documents from about the planning board. Um, the reason I say that, on Monday, after I delivered my memo to you, an opinion came out by Judges Misano and Sushwan and you said Homedale HOA. And it talks about um, jurisdiction of various land use planning boards um, to make a decision, the question comes back to notice. And the issue as to this one was, and even I said it to the planning board on December 16th, where is the resolution from the city council directing you to consider amendments to the Central Orange Redevelopment Plan? At the planning board, no one could produce that document. That's part of my OPA request. So the question is today, are you asking to adopt something that might not be valid by the planning board? that they didn't have jurisdiction from granted by you. Then there was a question, did they ever give notice that at the hearing they were going to have that they were going to consider amendments to the Central um, Orange Redevelopment Plan? I've asked for the documents to show, one, that you mailed the notices to the property owners that are being affected, and whether you published notice to the public 
to know what you were going to do at that meeting. I have not received any documents. In addition, there's been never, to my knowledge, there's never been publication of notice of action taken at the planning board by December 16th. Um, in addition, I have not seen a resolution, an actual resolution from the planning board telling you they did what they did. Because the way this worked, you adopted on first reading an amendment to the planning board, to, to, to the plan, then it went to the planning board, they adopted it, and now we're back here. But the question is, do they have jurisdiction to do what they did, A, for by the authorization by this, by this council, and two, did they ever give notice to the public? And that ties into the opinion that I just gave to you. And then you throw in the additional wrinkle that the deal didn't close. We were told that this was an urgent, immediate deal that had to close by the 20th, and it did not close. Are there any other citizens who wish to speak? Motion, Motion to close vote. citizen comments. Move. Move. Councilwoman Williams and Councilman Colin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt on final? Move. Councilwoman Williams. Second. And Councilman Jackson. On the motion? On the motion, Council President. Councilman Jackson. Uh, uh, as I'm interested in process issues, could someone please uh, address the issue regarding the process in the, uh, the authority of the planning board to take actions they took previously? Can someone comment on that? Uh, Mr. Jackson, that is going to take some research. Okay. So, and the attorney has to respond to you. All right. All right. So we okay. won't be able to answer that tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, and, and just generally uh, regarding this particular motion, uh, I, I see that these were uh, in addition, never mind, I, I see the date. W one thing that I would like to bring to everyone's attention, um, the, redevelop the Central Orange Redevelopment Plan was initially adopted in 2003, and these additions come so long after, I, I don't know why they might have been uh, excluded from the original resolution, but uh, in in consideration of what we're trying to do moving forward and our recent uh, actions in the last meeting, uh, I, I understand why it is now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Council President? Yes, Councilman Williams. In light of um, those questions not being able to be answered, is this document prepared to be voted on? As far as I know, it is. We went over it before. Mr. Mack, Council President, um, it is the administration's position and we request that the council move forward with adopting this on second reading. This is basically adding back properties to the list to be acquired through the Central Orange Redevelopment Plan and we ask for your support in adopting this on second reading. Mr. Mack, can you speak to some of the concerns that Mr. Fell raised? Uh, the concerns that were raised by Mr. Fell I am not in a position to speak on those. I believe the council president uh, appropriately um, indicated that those are issues that are pretty much outside of the scope of what we're doing right now and that they will be looked at by legal counsel. So you're saying that there, so the simplicity of this document is that it's adding properties back to the document. The question he's raised are not I'm not in a position to give credibility to anything that was said by the speaker. Okay. Moved agenda. I, I wasn't finished, Council President. And Ms. Lanier, regarding the, um, <coughs> the Oprah documents, do we know why the delay? No. You I mean, the request was forwarded, no response was received. So or the request, the, the department did not respond? The respective departments did not respond to you? Correct. Okay. Attorney, could you make sure after this is over that those documents are given to the clerk's office? Yes, Council have, President. Have you one of your attorneys do the research so yes, they Council can be President. made available? Will do. All right. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? No. Council President Eason? Yes. That's five yeas, one no, and one absent. Motion passed. 59-2019 W.O. An ordinance authorizing the execution of a contract of sale between the city and 595 Lincoln Avenue 
Urban Renewal Entity LLC for the sale of real property located at 595 Lincoln Avenue and identified on the city tax map as block 6303, lot 7, and authorizing the mayor or his designee to execute the documents necessary to implement the conveyance of this property subject to certain conditions. Any citizens wish to speak? Hi, Mary Mead, 668 Lincoln Avenue. Um, so I've been driving around my neighborhood. And guess what? We have a huge parking problem. This project will not help. It will exacerbate. I ask you to go in the evening and see if you think a fire truck can get down Willow, can get down any of these little streets around. Do you think that this will lessen the number of double parked cars? Do you think that any of what, any of this density is necessary to create a more vibrant neighborhood? Do you think that this congestion will make my property more valuable? Do you think that this congestion, this density, will make my life any easier? It is going to be a mess for at least three years. And what, what do we gain? Maybe we don't even know what the pilot is. But it won't be a lot, will it? It won't. Will it be enough to pay for a lot more fire department? Because if they can't get down streets, they're going to have to figure out ways not to. I think that means more equipment. I don't know. I'm not a firefighter. But somebody should check in with them. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. And my name is Jeffrey Feld. A lot of these issues are procedural and statutory. You're asking to make a legislative decision. When I read the body of the proposed ordinance, can someone tell me what the state enabling statute is? The reason I say that today, there's something called about state preemption. And someone told me about what the city of Newark did. And I said, there was a case in Orange called Feld 7 where you try to impose annual um, fees, not on turnover, on every apartment. Um, fortunately, myself and a landlord consortium, we invalidated that ordinance because you violated state law. The question is, based on what Judge Kennedy and Judge Rothschild, in my heads up letters, I told you to read this transcript. The transcript's in the clerk's office. It's from March 13, 2013, where Judge Rothschild said, I didn't know what Judge Kennedy, because there was a transcript gap, but then Judge um, Sutter in the last few years says, if there's a transcript gap, you have to create the record. And we had certifications from Manny Menez and former Councilman Lewis. It told what Judge um, Kennedy said in November 2010. He warned the city, don't do it again. If you're going to sell property, you tell me in the face, the four corners of the document, what statute and that allows you to do it. If you're going to sell property, you better have an appraisal. Again, it goes back to Oprah. I requested a copy of the appraisal to tell me how you got to the value, that the value is fair and reasonable of $1.2 million. Because we recall on this walk-on, on December was it 2nd, December 3rd, the original contract was 1.7. And around, no one knows, no one explained how $500,000 disappeared. Where is the appraisal? I made an Oprah request. In the last year, you have Judge Sabatino, Judge Koblitz talking about when you make legislative decisions, we're going to be in court again. Go, where is the legislative record? I made a request. I made the statement at the first reading. I made an open request. We're here today. More than a month later, where is the appraisal supporting your finding that $1.2 million is reasonable and fair? I know where the courthouse is. I know where a lot of things are. I also, someone told me, someone pled guilty on December 30th. And there might be connections to what's going on with the federal investigation where that person had pled guilty to Judge McNulty. And Mr. Fail, could you please stick to the, 
I am to the I am sticking to the document, Mr. Fail. I'm talking about what the case law is. Stick to the document. I'm talking about case. All right, stick to the document. What is the state? to the document. Mr. please do not interrupt Council President. She interrupted me. Dodge, I said, Mr. Fail, stick to the document. This is about. Where's the four corners? Four corners. Where is the state enabling statute? Council President, to finish her statement before you continue. This is about 59-2019. Stick to the what's in the document. I am. I am. Okay. Where in the four corners does it tell you the statute? Where is in the record is the evidence that the, the value of fairness? Where is an appraisal? And when are you going to appear for your deposition? <laughs> Any other citizens wish to speak? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm here this evening because um, uh, this ordinance, 29-2019, I own property in this area. 59. And, I beg your pardon? You did say 59, right? 2019. Yeah, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I was not notified that um, construction was going to take place. Isn't it the law that everyone in the area is supposed to? I'm not talking at my address where I live. I own other property on Lincoln Avenue right down the street from there. Ms. Arthur, yes. if you read the document, this has not gotten to that point. It will get to that point when he starts, starts the design of the property. Then you will get notified. This is just for the city to sell the property so it can be used for development. This is just starting the process. Oh, oh. All right. Uh, is this, you just yeah. selling the property? Yeah, it's just to sell. Okay. Just, this is just the starting the process. Okay. We didn't get to the design phase yet where they're going to let you know they're going to start construction and all that yet. No, but we're supposed to know before you start construction. I know, that's that why I said this, this one, you will get the letters when they start to talk about what they're going to do with the property. Yeah, but we should know. Because the property apparently has been sold to someone. Well, it, well no, this is just starting the process. Okay. All right then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Any more motion to close citizen no. comments? Oh, yes, <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> Ms. Wilson. Murphy Wilson, 362 Haywood. And I would ask that the Council hold off on this and, and not vote on this tonight uh, because I, I have grave concerns about this as projected. It is much too congested down there for a 60 unit uh, project. Uh, the streets are too narrow. We already have a parking issue as we spent a lot of time on in the past year. Uh, it's just too congested with all the double parking and the people there, the side streets, the n houses on those side streets, a number of them don't have driveways. They have to park on the streets. And I'm also concerned about the impact on our schools. You put that many people over there, you're going to have an impact on schools. And, and that's very, very serious. We're, we're already bursting at the seams. There's no emergency. So the same way that you're holding off on some of these others, I would ask that you hold off on this. This congestion and all is contrary to the master plan, which says that we want to reduce density and that we want to maintain the character of the AA zone. And this is right across the street from the AA zone. This is, this is not going to advance what we suggested that we wanted in the master plan. And it's not going to improve the quality of life down there. It's just going to make it worse. So I strongly request that this council hold off on this until we have some more time to review it and discuss this because in its current state it is just not a good idea at all. I think it's very wrong for the neighborhood. Good evening and happy new year to all of us. Uh, I live on State, your name. State and your name please. Maxime Filemi. And I live on 671 Lincoln Avenue. Even though this has been for some years, when things were lighter, my wife used to park her car all the way down behind the school and walk down at 11.30 PM. Even now that things have getting worse, and then you're going to add 
45 new cars to be parked on the street. No. How much can we take? And the question is very simple. If when things were lighter, we used to park our car all the way down to the, up the hill, now that things are expanding, give credit to the police that the stats are telling us crimes are down and all of that. But I would like to know how many of you, female, will want to walk three blocks from where you live before you build that, you sell that land and then build that apartment building. Thank you. Any, Any other citizens? Motion to close citizen comments. Move. Second. Councilman Williams and Councilman Jackson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion to adopt on final? Move. Second. Council and Councilman Johnson. On the motion, Councilman Yes, President. Councilman Jackson. I, I, I had some similar questions regarding the process in this particular document. Um, but I want to re um, direct people to some of the issues that help make me feel a little bit more comfortable about what's happening here. Um, first of all, the plan has to, uh, it has to go through the process. The planning board, the zoning board of adjustment if there are uh, variances needed. And certainly, um, if you look at the first page of the contract of sale, in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, whereas clause, right before, now, therefore, it says, although the parties have not completely negotiated a, a redevelopment agreement yet, they wish to enter into this contract of sale for the conveyance of the property from the city to the redeveloper. First, we own the property. We, we didn't sell it to anybody yet. This is the process to convey it to a developer. Uh, and we have not, the city has not negotiated re a redevelopment agreement, so believe me that your concerns will be forwarded and considered when those negotiations occur. Um, there is a clause regarding the sale, uh, and it has to do with a, a reverter for noncompliance with conditions sub subsequent, that is in section 2.2. It said, if the redeveloper fails to satisfy the conditions subsequent set forth with sections 2.1 herein, and section 2.1 regards the conditions, uh, the property shall revert to the city without any further act. So there is a, cal uh, there is a, a clock ticking once we pass this ordinance and negotiations begin. Um, and the city is, uh, in, in, in this agreement, agrees to, um, uh, they, they, the city recognized that the project proposed, and I'm reading from section 1.6, is not fully consistent with the current, current zoning requirements of the redevelopment plan. So we will not only negotiate what happens in the plan, it will go through the process of the planning board and the zoning board as necessary, and certainly those concerns you have about congestion and safety on the streets are our concerns as well. It's not like we live in a different city uh, it, we we want to be sure that uh, our citizens don't have to worry about uh, driving around the block waiting for somebody to move move their car. Um, we we will uh, hold these developers accountable for the safety and uh, peace and tranquility of our town. Believe us. Uh, uh, so I, I please uh, um, maintain your vigilance, of course. But be, be um, comforted in, in, in that the process is in the initial stages and your concerns will be um, uh, not only addressed but um, forwarded to the developer in understanding um, what we need them to do in order to build that, uh, their development in our town. That's all I have. And just to add on to that, all of the new construction that we've done, they have added parking underneath the buildings. It's not on the street. They do the parking underneath them. Just drive around the city and you see all the new development has parking underneath their buildings to accommodate the residents. And that's the way it is. I got a couple of new villas in my ward. All of the parking is underground. So it's not a lot of congestion with the parking over there. And move the agenda. Council President. Council, yes, Councilwoman Williams. So on the motion, um, as Councilman Jackson um, just correctly stated, stated this is at the cell. There has been a proposal um, put before the planning and the council in terms of what um, is proposed to be there. And of course, 
from day one to day 365, there, there possibly will be a lot of changes. Um, I think, I know, because I've spoken to Ms. Mead, it's not so much the parking, um, because it's, it's, it's almost a parking half, it's the opposite now, because it's almost a parking space and a half per unit now, because it, it's 45 and it's 45 units, 60 parking spaces, I believe. Correct, how much? I, I'm not sure exactly the ratio. Um, yeah, I don't think that's the ratio. 60 and 90. But the question is, um, guests coming, the, the concern is not so much for the residents that live there, it's for the guests that will be coming. How will that be handled? So you come see me, you, I, you I would have to park on the street. Um, has that been factored in? Um, also, and Lincoln Avenue is, there's also there's the issue of parking right now. But the, the immediate concern is um, the, the, the drop in the amount. Do we have an answer why there was a difference from what was originally to what was um, adopted? Why the decrease at a time when this is a seller's market? I'll repeat your question, Counselor. The price decrease at a time when the market is in, se in favor of the seller. So if anything, possibly the, the price should have went up. And so do we have a justification for that decrease? Uh, that's the question that I would have to come back uh, Mr. to Mr. Mapp can't answer that, and uh, business administrator is not here. And one of the things I want to well, say is The clerk that is saying that she has a... The original one was a typo. Okay. So it was 1.2 has right. always been the one, amount? One point. It was always it was been 1.2. It, it was supposed to be 1.2. Yeah, that's right. We did do that. We did okay. that in a previous meeting. Right. Yeah, that was passed. Okay. That's why it was reduced. I'm was sorry. Done. So the record is clear. Can you repeat that, Ms. Lanier? It was a typo when the initial um, ordinance came out, and it was mm -hmm. supposed to be 1.2, but it said 1.7. Okay, so 1.2 was always the price that was brought to the table and negotiated. Mr. Montellis? Yes. Okay. And we went through that in the council meeting because we did the retail, we did the, you corrected it at the council mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, but so we're, it's a question that came up tonight and I want the record to be clear. And so in terms of the plans, um, their proposals right now, correct? I think that Councilor Jackson was very clear and articulated the situation very well that there will be a time when this will be before the planning board and those concerns will be appropriately addressed at that time. But what we're trying to do here this evening is to get this to close. And we haven't closed as of right now. Mm -hmm. And so it is important that we move forward with this second reading. Mm -hmm. This was done previously by resolution. Mm -hmm. And the administration, although the administration believes that that was sufficient, mm -hmm. we decided to bring this ordinance before you as an additional layer of protection. And so the administration would like the support of the council to move forward with this on second reading so that the process can move forward. The concerns expressed here this mm -hmm. evening are valid and would be addressed appropriately at the right time. And Mr. Matt, so is the reason that the closing did not happen is because they're waiting for this um, ordinance to pass on second reading? Uh, that is correct. Okay, so the delay in the closing is because of this ordinance. And um, Mr. Montellis, is there, can you speak to um, the agreement that in fact, if this sale goes forward, but now we get to a point where the plan is not approved by this council. What is the recourse for the um, buyer at that point? That I'd have to look into, council. Well, that's a planning board issue. Right. Yeah. I'd that have to look have into to and confer from, with the planning board. Have to come secretary. from the planning board attorney. The sec by planning board secretary and the planning board attorney. Right. Okay. Council mm -hmm. President, if I may yes. offer a little Councilman more reassurance. Jackson. Uh, it, e each plan, a proposal that is presented to the planning board goes through uh, a review by the fire department for the effect on the, the uh, safety of, of the uh, the safety and the impact of the uh, um, the plan on the surrounding community. Also, the uh, schools uh, take a look at it, and um, every mm -hmm. it, we make sure that everyone who is obligated to serve the ta serve those citizens who may come in 
um, would have an op opportunity to uh, uh, not necessarily direct the, the this construction of the project, but it, to inform them about what the law is and what we require as a town. So uh, the fire department will opine about whether or not it will uh, result in safety hazards. The schools will um, opine about whether or not it will be in, um, uh, an, an oppressive impact on the population of the local schools. And, you know, as these are, are proposals, also those are projections, but there are certain laws that need to be followed. And part of the negotiation, part of the due diligence of the administration is that they ensure that the law and not the model, the model, the master plan, all those things are followed. So um, in, in looking at the collaboration we've been doing with each project that comes before us, uh, I have uh, full confidence that all those things will be taken care of prior to our um, uh, prior to commencement of the project. And I was yeah. I have one yeah. more question. Hold on, hold on. Hold I on. have one. Count, hold I, it, Councilman Wooten. Mm -hmm. Good, good. I'm going. Right. So I I just have a concern. I know that this is a a resolution to execute a sale, but I have concerns about the safety. And I've always said that I believe when we have cul-de-sacs and we have people parking at the entrance of both sides of the cul-de-sac, and I, I've asked the BA this before, and he said to me that the fire truck may not be able to get through, but they can go to a next street, and we have long enough hoses to put the fire out. So I'm going to ask the same question. Does the fire department actually go out? Has the fire department actually gone out to this street when the street was parked up on both sides to see where they can go to position themselves if something bad or terrible happens. Prior to a design and a plan being approved by the planning board, the fire department, the police, and they all flesh, sit down flesh. in a techno That's review. Good. They go out and visit the site and make sure there's ample room for them to get through and the parking issues. Usually the parking issues are controlled by the police department. So mm -hmm. if there's people parking in the right wrong places, they go out and give them a ticket. The other good part of this is the superintendent of schools, Superintendent Fitzhugh, now sits down with the developer himself. If I think we got a meet coming up later on in the week, so he can find out for himself what is the impact of the school district when we are building new development and construction. He's also on the tech review committee, so they know firsthand what's happening with the how many kids is expected and how it's going to move forward. But we already know the, what the best plans of mice and men sometimes don't end up the way they started. Because even though you say you're going to build one bedroom apartment so there's that much of an impact on the school district, when the apartment is just conf finished, what usually happens? Because of the, the economy, kids are coming into one bedrooms. You have five or six kids in a one bedroom apartment. So those are things we cannot control. Yes, we can. But I just want to say that the Techno Review Committee does review all of that, and the fire department has to give a stamp of okay. Yes, our trucks can fit through, or you, or the developer has to do something different so that they can fit through to get to to do control the fire. Okay. Councilman Williams, I just want to clarify that we can control. Um, the apartment, <laughs> who was in the apartments and everything, and we just have to use our enforcement. But my question, um, this is a, piece, a public property. So does this, the sale of this property require notice to people in the area, like if we were doing construction? Yes. So because this is a sale of the public property, there was a, noti there was a requirement of notice that was supposed to be sent out. And is it the same 200? feet distance? Yes. Okay. Um, and we just had a resident come up and said that they were not notified. Um, a turn, excuse me, a turn of Montonis. Now, when they did the, the development in my area, we only got a notice when the design was getting approved and they were ready to start the development. Not for the sale of the property, because the owner has to ha can sell his property whoever they want to sell it to. Am I correct? That is true. But so they, the, the residents property. can't stop an owner from selling their property. <coughs> this comes into play when they get ready to do the design and the development. Then everybody gets notice that says, we're planning on doing a development here. We're having a meeting. You guys can come out and voice your concerns. Council President, 
as a point of order, this is the people's property, and that's where it's different than a, re a regular. I'm talking about what the planning board does. That's okay. what I'm talking about. Okay, and Mr. Montellus just said there has to be a notification. No, he just shook his head no, because you can't tell a person. It, this it is, is it's the people's property. Which one is the police building? Yes. It, it, everybody yeah. should be notified. Yeah. Um, everybody should be notified. Should be notified. <laughs> president. Exactly. Um, Could we, well, you know what? We're going to have Mr. Martellus right, get the uh, information. We can belabor this and sit here all night no, talking finish, about the do Hold on, my, hold on, hold on. So we're going to move on, and we're going to get a legal opinion, mm -hmm. and we're going to stop guessing and who said, he said, and Mr. Martellus is going to take the notes, and he's going to come back and clarify every question that was asked. Well, let him hear the question. Because questions. we do not have the person here that can really answer those questions tonight. So we're going to move on to vote. So you well, can vote it up, Council or you President, can vote it down, well, and we're going to move on. Council President, he didn't hear my question. That's the problem. <laughs> he's talking. So, Mr. Montellus, in yes. fact, if there has to be a notification, there is a file somewhere stating that there was a notification and who it went to. So, in fact, you have that. Can you send it to the clerk's office? <clears throat> my understanding that there was, in fact, a notice. Now, who is on that? My hear. understanding that there was, in fact, a notice, but I'd have to do some additional research mm -hmm. to exactly. confirm that. That's number one. Right, right. With respect to... Um, um, you said there was. That's my understanding. Okay. But I will do some additional research mm -hmm. to confirm that mm -hmm. so that we're all operating on the same page. Okay. And can you just, once you get that notice, can you send it, once you find it, can you just send it to the clerk's office so that she can share it with the city council? Absolutely. Okay. Phil said he had open requests for that. I'm not sure. I don't think, I don't think No, he, he didn't that. say, no. that was a part of one of his open requests? I don't think so. We're going to move the agenda. Council President, what? I just, just have one quick thing. Yes, Councilman Goldie. Thank you for your time, Council President. Um, the uh, Old Police Department slash Old Treatment Avenue School, it's been, I guess, Board of Air City owned property since it was built. And um, our schools, as we all know, um, has been busting at the seams um, for many, many uh, years, and they're going to continue to be, uh, be busting at the seams. Um, I know developers want to come in and and put up units, uh, make money, move people in. But in the same breath, um, after listening to um, some developers over the last few months, um, they don't care nothing about the schools in Orange. The only thing they care about is just packing people in, making as much money as they can make, um, and moving on. And um, and we don't have a lot of open space in Orange um, to um, keep up with the demand of um, building new schools. Uh, when we continue to um, take up every little <coughs> lot and stack units, at some point in time, where are we going to um, educate the young people that is going to be good, that's going to be coming uh, years after us is not going to be no um, space for them for us to even consider to uh, build um, uh, any type of um, new schools here in Orange. So I, I get it. I understand um, every one issue here. Um, and I always felt, I said on the record uh, years ago um, when I was in the police department, that that building, uh, when the police department moved out that building in 2001. It should have been deeded back to the Board of Ed. Amen. You know, and, 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 and I just want to let you know, Council President, I will not be um, uh, supporting this. Um, I think that uh, we should, um, that's, I think that's the last bit of property that the city owned that we could probably do some good, you know, um, uh, for the future generations uh, of of our um, town, and not just looking and think about a developer, developer who want to come in and right. put up a nice sprawling um, development, and then maybe two or three years down the road, um, suck out all the equity in it, and then move on. 
Councilman, That's all, Council President. Councilman Cook, I just want to comment on that. When that first came up, I spearheaded giving it back to the school, no support. Even the community didn't support the school getting it because then they were complaining about the kids being on their block and up and down the street. So it's been sitting there vacant for years and dilapidated and falling apart. We have to do something with that building because it brings down the neighborhood. It brings down the neighborhood. So if you're trying to upgrade orange and upgrade it to something, something needs to be done with that property. Still, it's sitting there for years and years on end and just deteriorating. Yeah, I know. It's like a, a school. But all of us had the opportunity on this council to spearhead giving it back to the school district. We didn't have the votes. And, and if I consider, it, Council President, that during the time that the STEM uh, program was considered, and the question was raised, why can't they just place But they didn't that want it for STEM. The they wanted they to want make, it. which I'm in favor of, a, a vacation of school, vacation of school yes. so that we could train our young people that's not going to college and yes. have a skill. Yes. Superintendent Lee was fighting for that tooth and nail. He got no support. And, and, and I don't no think support. he presented a proposal. So it's, that, that's what that it should have happened. That question was no, raised. No, we're going to move on with this. So, so now we're here at ground zero again. And that probably will, Mr. Arthur, please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Because we're going to move forward. So let's move the agenda. Okay. Oh, Council President, Council Wolton. I, I just have one quick question. Yes. It's through you to the city attorney. So Mr. Phil spoke to Phil 7, and I don't know the disposition. Can you send me the disposition of that case so I can see if there's any relevance to this um, ordinance? I will. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Coley? No. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilman Simmons Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? No. Councilwoman Wooten? No. Council President Eason? Yes. The motion did not pass. Three yeas, three noes, and one absent. Ordinance for introduction and first reading, there are none. Uh, veto ordinance by the mayor, December 24, 2019. Um, ordinance 57 2019, an ordinance of the city of Orange Township adopting the Lincoln Avenue 595 Lincoln Avenue Redevelopment Rehabilitation Plan pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12A 7E. The mayor vetoed the ordinance because it was replaced by ordinance 60 2019, uh, which is on for second reading on the next council meeting. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion to override the veto? The veto stays. Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. Therefore, there will be no separate discussion of these items unless the council member so requests in which event the items will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. At this time, Council President, um, can we do a point of order to change the consent or agenda around to vote on the temporary budget? As you know, we have to vote on the temporary budget before we can pass the bill list um, and some of the and approve some of the contracts. So, can we have a point of order to override and move it to Council the President? first thing on the consent agenda? Council President? Yes, Council Williams. I'm going to um, ask if we, my point of order is to remove it and vote on it prior to the consent agenda because it's a financial document too. So well, that's what okay. we requested. That's what we requested. That you move it on it and do it prior to doing the consent agenda. I thought you said move the order to the top of the consent agenda. Yeah, but we're going to move it so that we can vote on it prior to us okay, doing the so consent I, agenda. So we're going to we remove, remove everything it, yeah. we need to remove and then we're going to do the point of order to vote on it first. Right, that's what yeah. I'm that's Got what it. Point, yeah. Are there any items that needs to be removed from the consent agenda? Just go through the ones that we're withdrawing. Um, 414? 414 is going to be returned to administration. 415, 416, and 418 will all be returned to administration. So they will and also- 417. 417. Um, and 400 is going to remain on the table. I think that was it. 
Are there any other items on the consent agenda that the council wishes to remove? I think that was it. Okay, so the items that I just mentioned are all going to be removed from the consent agenda, including item 16-2020. So the consent agenda now consists of Resolution 1-2020, 2, 3, 4, 5, Council 6. Hold on. Are you, we we're going to do 16 we first. To, my point is. No, but I just want to read what's on the consent agenda. And then we we'll go back. And, and then go. we're going to go back. Okay. So, okay, okay. okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Yeah, we do the point of order, right? Yes. Good You're going to have order. a point of order, point too. Point of order, Council President. I think we should, at this time, move 116-2020 uh, on the um, temporary budget prior to us voting on uh, the consent agenda. Can Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Williams. Yeah. On the motion? Seeing on roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Eason. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm looking at her calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. Okay. We're going to go to um, ordinance. I mean, resolution 16-2020, a resolution authorizing the adoption of current fund and water sewer utility fund temporary budget appropriation for the beginning of 2020 prior to the adoption of the calendar year 2020 budget in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 4-19. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilwoman Williams. Second. And Councilman Johnson. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. So we're going to vote on the consent agenda and then go to the, the rest of the items that were removed. The consent agenda is, where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Move. Second. Second. Councilwoman Williams and Councilman Johnson. On the motion, seeing on roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. Motion passed. No, we have to oh, go through these fired. return to administration. Resolution 14-2019, a resolution authorizing the list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to labor matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion to return to administration? Second. Councilwoman Williams and Councilman Jackson. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilman Summers Johnson, Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 415-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to litigation matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion to return to administration? Move. Second. Second. Councilman Johnson and Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion, seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 416-2019, a resolution authorizing the list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to workers' compensation matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. A motion to return to administration? Move. Second. Um, Williams and Jackson. On the motion. 
Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. 417-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to redevelopment matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Motion to return to administration? Move. Second. Williams and Wooten. On the motion? Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. 418-2019, a resolution authorizing a list of law firms to represent the city of Orange Township in regards to tax appeal matters on an ad needs basis for a period of one year from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Motion to return to administration? Move. Second. Second. Motion by Councilman Williams, second by Councilman Jackson. On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. New business and walk on resolutions. Um, I'm going to read. That's where we are, right? Point of order. One moment, please. Also, wait, wait a minute. I forgot to do something else. Let me just check. So I skipped ordinance 400, which was tabled. So I'm going to read it. And the recommendation is to re let it remain tabled. 400 2019, a resolution granting developer designation for Skyview Capital LLC and or its affiliates B&O Urban Renewal Entity as a developer within the Transit Village District, east portion of Central at Orange Redevelopment Area. This was tabled from 12-3-2019, 12-17-2019. Is there a motion to lift from the table? Seeing none, it will remain tabled. Councilor, before she, before she, I know, continues with the walk on, you have two additional ones, 21, uh, 20, 20, 20, and 21, 20, 20, and that's for the uh, budget consultant and the legislative research officer. Are you guys comfortable with us adding them as a walk on tonight? And what about uh, 19, 2020, 20, the emergency demolition? Are we going to do those? These okay. are just in addition to right. those. Just making sure. So, are you guys comfortable with us adding these in tonight? I'm okay. not opposed. So we're going to do all of them. Okay. Oh, you got your card. Okay. All right. New business. The following resolutions are being considered for tonight to be walked onto the agenda. I'm going to read the resolution numbers and then. After the citizen comments, I will read each one by title and resolution number before the vote. Resolution 17-2020-WO, 18-2020-WO, 19-2020-WO, 20-2020-WO, and 21-2020-WO. Is there a motion to walk these resolutions on to the agenda? Move. Second. Second. Motion by uh, Councilman Coley, second by Councilwoman Williams. On the motion? See another roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Easton? Yes. Are there any citizens who wish to speak on any of the resolutions that have just been added to the agenda? My name is Jeffrey Feld. Other than 19 2020, which is an emergency that needs to be going on, what is the emergent need for the four? Four other ones have to be considered tonight. And as to 20 and 21, 2020, should we be concerned that only one firm responded to each of those um, professional retentions? You know, if, it was, if it's a history that they were only getting one always responding, is, is that, does that say something? 
the proper procedures was used and only one chose to respond. So thus we can't control that. So move on. Any other citizens? Motion to, Motion to close citizen Move. comments? Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilwoman Wooten. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 17 2020 WO, a resolution celebrating the life of Arthur F. Powell, sponsored by Council Member Donna K. Williams. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilman Jackson? Second. And Councilman Johnson. On the motion? Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 18-2020, a resolution authorizing change order number one to decrease the contract with Cefeli and Sun General <coughs> Contracting, Inc., 81 Franklin Avenue, Nutley, New Jersey, 07110, for the project known as the NJIB 18 roadway improvement in amount of $2,768,795. Motion to adopt? Move. Councilman Williams? Second. Second with Councilman Johnson. On the motion? On the motion. Um, with this decrease, the money goes back to the state or do we get to keep it and reassign it? Mr. Uh, Mays, you want to respond to that? Oh. Marty Mays, Director of Planning and DPW. The decrease will allow the money to flow back into the contract and the money will be used on streets, more streets. So we... We'll keep, keep the money. Okay, that's what I wanted. Okay. Okay. Hey, Madam uh, President. Councilman Johnson. Uh, Director Mays, uh, if you don't mind, I tried to catch you before, before you made a U-turn. But um, this, this is a significant amount of money right. uh, being on, on, a, on a change order number one. I mean, especially if we got to do a bidding process with this this one contractor had all the streets. They were the general contractor for all the streets. Yes. And when when is this milling just for uh, a few of the streets Ooh. or it was for, savings for all of them? It was for all of them. For all of them. So we kind of he kind of went in high on the bid. It right. And what's going to happen is what we envision is is that. We will go back out to bid, this contractor bid high on the asphalt. We're going to get a much better price and probably realize about, we think, about $300,000 savings. Uh, are we, are we uh, relying on uh, the assistance of uh, one of the engineering firms that we, uh, that we hire yes, in this bidding process? Yes. And, and they the got snookered too? No, not necessarily. I mean, the contractor bid his price. And uh -huh. actually, with this move, like I said, we're going to realize a three hundred thousand dollar savings. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for the savings, but th that's a you big gap, of almost close to three million dollars. Remember, right. the project itself was ten million. Yes, correct. And all we right, spent sir. about five million so far on the curb and sidewalk. All right. I would tell you to stay out in the North Ward, but account price, I'm finished. <laughs> Get an extra two million for the West Ward. No, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. <laughs> Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 19-2020 WO, a resolution declaring an emergency and authorizing the awarding of a contract between the City of Orange Township and Carvella Demolition, 40 D. Frost Avenue, East Hanover, New Jersey, 07936, for the demolition of 186 Hickory Street, an amount not to exceed 36500 A motion to adopt? Move. Second. A uh, motion by Councilman Coley, second by Councilwoman Williams. On the motion? On the motion. Yes, Councilwoman Williams, through you, Director Mays. Thank you for that smile. You made us happy. Like we made. I got to get it down to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's past right. Christmas. You're, just so you right. know. You're absolutely right. Yes. So, Director, um, if this passes tonight, can you tell me what the timeline will look like? Within a week. Within a week. Okay. Thank you. 
and do, and, and and I will ask is that because it will um, can we make sure the proper notifications will be that it'll be cut off Central Avenue in at least 48 hours so people can um because it'll be an all day project can mm -hmm. um you know I'll make sure it. it's right yep. okay thank you it's not Christmas New Year's man <laughs> Martin Luther King <laughs> president mm. roll call Councilman Coley yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 20 2020 WO, a resolution authorizing and ratifying a professional service contract with Lurch, Vinci, and Higgins LLP located at 1717 Route 208, Fair Lawn, New Jersey 07410, for assistance with preparation of the annual budget commencing on January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 an amount not to exceed $60,000. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Second. Councilwoman Williams and? Councilman Coley, second by Councilwoman Williams. On the motion? On the motion. Since this is a walk and I've got a fresh question. Councilman, Councilman Johnson? And you're on this 2020, uh, the $60,000, is that uh, Leach, Vinci, and Higgins are working with the council or working with the city? The council. It's the budget consult. Budget consult. I thought that contract was higher than sixty. No, he 000. does other things for the city. It's not budget. But I, but I, I can't I can't recall this number being. I thought it was close to a, a six figure. Well, one year was a little higher because the administration contract was incorporated with the council contract. That's what drove and they the did number. Extra Okay, so this this is specifically for to be the budget consultant in this particular contract. Yes. All right. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. 21-2020-WO, a resolution awarding professional service contract for special counsel to provide legislative research officer services from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020, an amount not to exceed $30,000. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Coley, second by Councilwoman Williams on the motion. Seeing none, roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams? Councilwoman yes, Williams? I'm sorry. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Is there any pending business? Council President? Yes, Councilwoman Williams. Um, to you, Ms. Lanier? Yes. I like this summary page. It's, it's nice. Oh, you like that? Yeah, being able to see things at a glance. So okay. I just hope this is not just a January 7th thing. When we have walk-ons. And I just want to, I know we're going to have a later date to expound on this, but I want to take the time that um, we know our deputy clerk has gone on to retirement, so she's probably somewhere uh, with her feet up, chilling. So I just want to um, just thank Madeline on the record for her service. And, um, and we know Quinn is going on to a different assignment, and I want to wish Quinn... Um, success in his different assignment here within the city and just thank him for um, his ability to just be very helpful and uh, and work with the city council and then Tamara welcome to the city of Orange and we wish you tremendous success thank you and just an update we will also add Quinn in this celebration so how many of you will make it on that day the 17th at 3 the 17th at 3 o'clock can we count of all of you be there to say thank you to Madeline yeah. and Quinn? And Quinn? Yes. Would they, um, Council President? The 17th. Yes. What day you said? The, the 17th, 17th at 3 o'clock. Okay. So put it on your calendar. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilwoman Wooten. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Meeting adjourned at 9 17 p.m.